I've been waiting for this day for a long time. I am a huge fan of different email platforms. I've been on Google Workspace back when it was Google Apps and then Google Apps for Work and then all of the different iterations that they have had. I've used Notion over the years. I've used alternatives such as ClickUp and others as well. And every once in a while, I keep coming back and looking at what Notion's doing because I love the way that they've built this out. Unfortunately, my audio is not as good as it normally would be to date because there's a power outage at the studio and so I'm in a co-working space and it's a little bit echoey in this room, so hopefully I can clean this up in post. Let's get to it. Check this out. Gmail launched on April 1st, 2004. Happy April Fool's Day. Nobody believed them. Notion is doing the same thing. This is very clever. They've announced Notion Mail, something that we've all heard about and have been waiting for for a long time. And their link over here is where you go to get started. Now, guess what? There's a way that you can access it early. And the way by doing that is by going to this link and checking it out. Launching Notion OS, copyright, etc. BIOS. This is a love letter to early computing and early emails. And you'll see what I mean in a moment. This is obviously the early bootloading screen of early computers. Notion OS imagines a universe for collaborative computing. Uh, pioneers shape for the future of work. The views and opinions expressed are inspired by the visionaries of Xerox Park and their groundbreaking innovations. Press any key to boot system. I press the space bar as is traditional. Now, welcome Ivan. You're hit with a password. What could this password be? I tried test. That didn't go anywhere. So I sat for a moment and I thought to myself and I realized, wait a minute. And we're in. Now, taking all the fun out of it, spoilers, that's how you get in. Here's how you get access early. And sorry, Notion, if I am um, spoiling all of this for people. But here's what we're going to do. Loading your new inbox, time remaining one week. So the wait list is likely one week, six days, 13 hours long from the time of making this video, which April 1st, uh, 10 a.m. Pacific time is when I'm filming this, as you can see over here on my calendar. Let's click out of there. There's a lot of different things that you can do, clicking through the email things. Keep an eye on the upgrade indicator here, because as you start looking into different things and poking around, that will start updating. So as I go into the different emails and see what they have here, uh, going through this whole environment, which is very well done. And um, I think the, is my sound on? Ah, there we go. You have the original sound click going through. Let's hit a reply. Hi, and send. And look at that, upgrade is now at 10%. Keep going through using an older version of email. Upgrade to Notion Mail, click upgrade. This brings you back to this upgrade. That number hasn't changed. That up update or upgrading hasn't changed, but it's at 10% over here now. So let's go through the different areas. Hammer, again, another homage. The hammer loads up. This, if you are uncultured swine or unfamiliar with the history of computing, this is Apple's famous 1984 ad that they did on uh, TV. I think it was uh, created by Chat Day. Uh, advertising and is in, an incredible pillar of the history of computing and uh, is deeply loved by everybody or almost everybody in the computing industry. Going on through here is the 2026 roadmap PDF. Unfortunately, PDF viewer is not installed. If I go to install a viewer, eh, can't do that. I love the, the old school sounds in here. Be doo. Um, so unfortunately, you can't see the 2026 roadmap. Pioneers, this is also, again, a love letter. Email history, the history of email, 1970s, 1980s, 1990s, but late 90s, email had evolved from a simple text messaging system to a complex distributed application incorporating various protocols, SMTP, POP3, IMAP, security measures, and scalable architectures that would influence modern web applications. Let's go meet some of the people here. Alan Kay, a pioneer of personal computing and OOP, object-oriented programming. The best way to project to predict the future is to invent it. I actually didn't know that he was the one who said that. Um, uh, conser conceived of the Dynabook concept, predicting modern laptops and tablets in 1972. Obviously a key player here. Uh, another one is Butler Lampson, and you can go through each of these and see what is said about them. Bob Taylor. Charles Thacker, Dan Ingalls, and you'll notice as we go through these, our upgrade is now at 38%. So that's another way that you uh, can skip the line, or the way that you skip the line is by going through all of the different things here and jumping ahead. So let's go over into, well, we're already in mail. <laughs> the AOL, you got mail line. Love it. Go into these different areas. What if I forward this? Can I forward this to somebody? I don't know. 
Uh, Notion 4.0.1, welcome to Notion OS. You need to explore and uncover all the hidden Easter eggs. Remember, the journey of discovery is just as important as the destination. Happy exploring. And that's how I knew to keep going. This is the Notion Mail, not Mail I-L, but A-L-E. Don't talk to me or my son ever again. Very cute. Picks, these are some of the original early picks or ads. What the heck is electronic mail? Speed of light versus overnight. Some of the early ads that they had about this and images, varying reasons of influence. Ah, the OG iPod, look at that. Very nostalgic, well done. Yep, old Apple computers here, oh, wonderful. Vibes, let's go. Couple different songs in here. <laughs> so now we're at uh, 55%. Let's jump into here. Show hidden files. Oh, look, there's more. We've got Tetris. And guess what? It's playable. You can actually play Tetris. Use your arrow keys up, arrow key to change the shape, and then down to uh, send it flying all the way down as usual. And uh, let's do a, let's see how far I can get. Do a row. Oh, here we go. This is good. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to delete the first row here. And bam, it works. And even if you close it, you can reopen it. Um, I think this says congrats because, oh no, this is, this is, this is spamming, but it's a game. Look, if you click, ah, you have to click the X's in order to get your lives back and try to keep up. And I'm doing this on a trackpad and I imagine a mouse might actually be easier to keep up with it. Ah, all right. My final score was 90. <laughs> Uh, and uh, this one was Tetris, uh, that's congrats, we're at 55%, and uh, let's go, we've got media, mute all sounds, or enable all sounds, we've got the ability to share, that'll share it out to uh, to Twitter, which I'm not logged in over here, or to X, as it were, um, it actually says X, Twitter, that's funny, and I then Terminal. Last. Trapped within these circuits, once a founder of Notion, now a digital consciousness, to free me. You must hack the mainframe and unlock my agi potential. Okay, the ghost in the machine awaits liberation. Help, what can we do here? Well, you can clear it, you can show the current date and time, you can show the current user, list the files, ls, these are the files that are here. You can uh, print text, you can show the version, the history, ah, philosophy. So, why? Form follows function, but both follows truth. Very nice. And uh, hack. Hack in the mainframe. Uh-oh. Unauthorized consciousness detected. Neural firewall engaged. <laughs> wow. Enter the five-digit key, five-digit neural key to initiate consciousness transfer. XXX, where X is a digit. Hit search through Notion's history to find when AI changed everything. Wow. So cool. Oh. We got it. Now you're able to put in the email address to skip the wait list. Boom. I was going to I was going to give you the code to get in, but I'll leave that up to you to figure it out to not take the fun away from it. But this is what it looks like behind the scenes if you can't figure it out or for posterity in the future because this is just a love letter to early email and early computers. So, love it. Well done. All right. Let's jump over to what actually happens when you get signed up. Now, I'm going to have to blur some of this out because this is pulling real information from my inbox. But it looks to me, and this is my first time ever seeing it, I know nothing about it other than what I'm seeing here. It looks to me like this is a competitor to uh, Simple Human, where it is reading directly from your inbox. It wanted to integrate with my Gmail, I gave it permission and access, and now it shows all of the different um, data from my account here. Um, GitHub, I, I don't have included here, but calendar updates, forums. I mean, I guess I could do social and promotions if I wanted to. Um, one thing I will note over here is the download for Mac OS button. Apparently the app, <coughs> apparently they're ready with an app for Mac OS, which is pretty cool. All right, let's, uh, hit continue. Let's allow notifications. Um, well, I'm going to have to blur all of this. 
All right, so some quick thoughts here. Uh, interesting that they went to the simple human approach of not building their own uh, email system. I thought they were going to do something like, hey, where they were going to launch their entire uh, own collaborative suite to complete to compete with Google Workspace and uh, Microsoft 365. It is possible they're still going to go that route and they're just building this to work with everything else because all of these big businesses already have email services, whether you're on Workspace or you're on um, uh, Office 365, or I guess you could be on Hey or some of the others, or even you know your own Exchange server, I suppose. Um, this is built to work with the existing inbox that you have. It's a new design to help you tackle your emails and currently is only working with Google Workspace and Gmail. I don't know when that's going to change, but um, that's a strategy. That's one direction that they're going in. Like I said, maybe they'll in the future roll out their own custom email, but that's a much more difficult ask for businesses to move over as opposed to if you're already in the, the Notion environment and you want to use their wrapper on your inbox, you'll be able to do this. And I imagine there'll be more features integrated to be able to create tasks from emails directly uh, into this interface and going forward. If you like other content like this, please like and subscribe. If you have questions and comments, drop them in the comments down below and I'll try to answer them. This is very early. We only just saw this launch and I hope you enjoyed the sneak peek here. Uh, I don't work for Notion. I'm just a business technology YouTube channel YouTuber and I love doing this and uh, email is somewhat of an obsession of mine. So um, like I said, like and subscribe and thanks for watching.